Thank you for doing very good interviews, man. <laughs> I thought you did great in the last one. <laughs> we, I were don't know. The, we were in the you rain. Know, uh -huh, and I told you, you <laughs> asked me who my favorite preacher was, and I said, you. I know. <laughs> I'm not going to ask that question, that's for sure. I already know who my, my favorite preacher is. I know, it's is Gail. James. It's Gail. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite preacher, is Gail. <laughs> Can we start again? Mine and I, too. What's that? That's mine too. I know. You kind of got down there a little bit. I know. It, it's all right. I don't even want to be up there. It's, it's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. No, I don't care. I can edit it. Plus, it's behind the scenes. They don't but, know, you know, they don't know what we do behind the scenes before we even do things. But now my favorite preacher is Jesus Christ. Yeah, he he's is. always been I, I always, I want to see him preach. I'm uh -huh. asking that same question. I'm saying, can I see that? Hi, my name is Kevin Fair. I'm with Cry to God Ministries, and I am here in San Francisco at Palin Market, where the cable car turns around, and I am with a man of God, uh, Bill, and he has allowed me into his life that I may bring him to you, that you may uh, have an interview with a street preacher. He stands out here on Saturdays, and he raises his voice like a trumpet and declares to the people uh, their transgressions. And Bill, uh, I appreciate you letting me have this time. It's, it's actually a blessing to be able to uh, stand with you out on the streets and preach with you. But a lot of people would ask, what is a man of God? Well, I have to say the blessing is likewise, you know. It's one of my best friends right here. All my best friends are right here, actually. They're all around me right now. So I, I bless the Lord. <laughs> but, but what makes a man of God? I, you know, can you summarize that in a couple of words? No. You know, when I think of what, what, what the Lord calls me to do, I think of myself as a puppet on the string. And the Lord says, go. And I go, okay, Lord. The Lord says, speak. And I say, okay, Lord. And, you know, just as he told Ezekiel, he said, can these dry bones live? And I go, I don't know, Lord. And the Lord says, speak. And so I say, speak. But the work that God has done in my life is not the work that God has done out here on the street. The work that God has done in my life is how I live at home, how I live when I'm at work, you know, how I, what I think about and the things that I meditate on all day long. And, and that makes me into the man of God because God continually comes for me and he says, son, I want you to walk this way. Amen. And, he, and I go, yes, Lord. But sometimes I go, Lord, I don't want to do that. And the Lord says, the Lord says, go. And I go, okay, Lord. And, and, and many times, you know, I'm a little reluctant. Not many times, but sometimes. But I have to say the Lord has blessed me, even in my reluctance. You see, the Lord blesses the obedience of his people. He says, go, whether it's come out and preach on the street, whether it's you, you're at home and the Lord says, hey, I want you to love your wife. You know, as Christ loved the church or whatever it is. Or, hey, I want you to love your brothers and sisters the way that I lay down my life for you. This is what makes a man of God. A man who thinks about the Lord, you know, in the middle of the night. You know, because God says in the, in the psalm, he says, city, he says, think of, meditate upon me in the middle of the night. Don't speak, just think about me. And so I'm always thinking about the Lord. And I'm always thinking, wow, Lord, my life. I'm thinking about the Lord. His standards are way up here in my, my life. And my standards are like, oh, Lord, I, I fall so short. But the Lord's grace and the Lord's mercy is upon me. <clears throat> so I say the only reason that I'm a man of God, the only reason I can stand out here and do the things that God tells me to do, I think of like Noah. It says that Noah found grace before God. Oh, excellent. You know, so we have found grace before God. Oh, yes. <clears throat> We have found grace to be able to come out here and this is to come out and stand is just a it's just something that's that God has done in our hearts somewhere else. You know, in a secret place, in the middle of the day, at night, and all how we live when we're not out preaching. This is just an outward manifestation of all of that and and Hallelujah. And I don't even know if I answered your question, Kevin. Oh no, that, that's that's incredible. <coughs> that's life. That's life what you're telling me. I, and, that, and that's what it is. It's so entwined. It's so in detail. God's in detail of everything that you and me do. That's wonderful. 
You know, Bill, I've been probably preaching with you for man, four or five years, and I don't know a man like you that goes out three, four, five times a week. You've been doing this uh, years and years, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed. You know what I mean? I, I stand in awe of how much you go out and, and all the different places you go and how diligent you are at it and, and how God has put his hand upon you and fills you with the spirit and you're at this you know, fair or this concert or this street corner. I mean, why do you do it? Why, what motivates you? What moves you to go out four or five times a week and consistently? I mean, I don't even know anyone that preaches as much as you preach. And, uh, and, and I mean, you, this is your life. This is what you do. Uh, and why do you do it? Well, I don't know. I heard Leonard Ravenhill one time in an audio clip. He said that, he said, talking about churches in America, he said they preach an acceptable gospel. And I, and I was like, Lord, what does that mean? You know, because I didn't understand it. I says, Lord, what does that mean? They preach an acceptable gospel. And then the Lord showed me what it meant. And the Lord broke me and the Lord humbled me. Because the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not a, it's not a God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. The God, gospel of Jesus Christ is that God loved you so much he gave his only begotten son for you. He died for you. He bore your sin and your shame. And I say, what, what can I do for the Lord? And the reason why I go, and like I said before, there are sometimes I go, Lord, I don't want to go. Lord, I went out yesterday. Lord, I went out three times last week. I'm going to stay home. And sometimes, you know, the Lord lets me stay home and says, okay, you know, stay home. It's a good time to stay home. Lord tells me to stay home. But sometimes the Lord says, go. And the Lord, many times when I'm, you know, when I'm kind of reluctant to go, you know, the Lord brings into my path. He always, it seems like he always shows me the proud and arrogant Christian and the humble Christian. Because there are two kinds of Christians. Now, I don't, I don't, I say Christian, I use that term loosely. But that's what motivates me because when, when I get to speak to the people of God, oh, and, and the Lord has good things to say to his people. He has kind words to speak to his people. Even though sometimes it, you know, the world will listen and these people will listen to it and they'll say, oh, that's hard. But for the people of God, oh, it's a good word. It's a kind word. It's a loving word. And they love it. And they drink it down and they go, oh, this is good. And, and, and so that's why I like to go out. I like to go out because it pleases the Lord. You know, and, uh, you know, God has called some people to go out and pass out tracts. God's called some people, maybe they would come and they would hand, hold a banner, you know, and they don't preach. You know, I say I go out and I like to surround myself with people who like to talk to people because God's called me to be a preacher. And so I'd say it's a gift and calling. It's not that I'm special. It's not that I'm better than you or better than them, but I just want to use the gifts that God's given me to, so that he would be glorified. So when I go out, I'm obeying the Lord. I'm saying, yes, Father. You know, as Jesus said, he told the story of the two, two sons and his father said, hey, son, go out and mow the field. And he said, yes. And, and the other son, he said, go out and mow the field. And he said, no. But the one who said yes didn't go. And the one who said no did go. I'm like the one that said no many times. Like, Lord, I want to do this. But I said, Lord, I want to please you. I want to love you. You know, if you say we love the Lord, our love is displayed in our obedience. And I, <clears throat> I'm just amazed that the grace of God is upon me because, you know, I, I'm not any better than anybody here. I deserve to go to hell. I deserve the lake of fire. I deserve the wrath of God. But God has shown me favor. And God has shown me his great love and he keeps disciplining me. So I rejoice in the, in the work of Jesus Christ, not what I have done. And I'm certainly not going to be out here and go, uh, and be able to say one day, Lord, Lord, I, I preached in your name. No, no, I, I'm out here going, Lord, I, I just want to obey you. You know, and Praise when God. I speak, I'm out here going, Lord, what do you want me to say? I'm fearful. I am yeah. truly am fearful. I'm fearful because one thing that I'm fearful of is if I speak a hard word and if it's, I want to say, Lord, is this your word? Yeah. Is this coming from you? Because... I don't want to rebuke the people of God. I don't want to sadden the righteous. 
when God did told me not to, you right. know, with lies. But I want to speak the truth. And so this is the reason why I go, because the Lord has told me to come. And we're right here in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't know how many years ago it was. Maybe it was four or five years ago. It's before I met you. You know, somewhere in there. I lose track of time. But I, I came out here, this trolley car turned around, and I'd been coming here for a while. I'd come here, and I would walk here to the wharf, hand out tracks, talk to people. You know, just really kind of, I wouldn't say I was really on fire for the Lord, but I know the Lord was speaking to me, the Lord was directing me to come here. And w one day I decided to get on this trolley car turnaround because I'd never been on it. I lived here for a long time, San Francisco Bay Area, and I had never been on it. So I got on there, and I was this long line that goes almost all the way down the end of the block. And I got in this long line, and there was a man over here, a street preacher, and he was preaching. And I sat there in this line for like 45 minutes. I listened to everything that everybody said. You know, people are on their phone going, oh, there's a nutcase here, there's a crazy guy. They said all kinds of bad things about him. And I just listened to it. I listened, I watched, and I heard what the guy said, and I go, oh, that's true. And some things I go, I don't know if I would say that. <laughs> and so, but I thought, well, he's being obedient. What can I say? Uh, he's being obedient to the call. How can I judge him? You know, he's doing better than I am because I'm not. How can I judge something that I know nothing about? And so I got all the way to the end of the line and the trolley car was coming to pick me up. And in my heart, I said, that guy's a fool. And just like lightning come from heaven, lightning. I mean, literally just like lightning struck me. And the Spirit of God reminded me what Paul said, the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to them that perish. Mm, wow. But the power of God and the salvation to those who believe. Mm. And immediately I said, God, I'm sorry. I said, oh God, have mercy on me. God, forgive me. And the Lord said to me, son, you're going to do the same thing that man's doing. Wow. And I said, okay, Lord, but you have to help me. I can't do it. And so it's amazing. You know, not long after that, I... I met a man, Eric, here mm -hmm. while I was preaching. I met him here, and him and I became friends and still consider him to be my friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't preach together anymore. And, I, and later on, you know, I met a man in Palo Alto. We were out preaching on a Sunday, and he said he was a prophet, and he came up to me, and he goes, I got a word from the Lord for you. And he said, the Lord's going to bring us, uh, move people around in your life, bring, dif bring different men into your life. And a week later, I come here, and I meet Kevin. And so, and I meet some other people. And so, uh, it's truly amazing, you know, the man that you see behind me holding the banner. One of those times when I came to San Francisco, and I was out here handing out tracks about two blocks away, it was around Christmas time. I had the million dollar bills from uh, Ray Comfort. And I really liked him at the time, I still do sometimes. But uh, he, uh, he come up to me and he goes, hey, I'm a Christian. And he goes, what are you handing out? And I go, oh, and he goes, can I have some of those? And I'm like, here. And, and he told me he lived on the streets. He told me his name and Dennis. And I go, okay. And he left. And, and I, uh, in my heart, I was going, Lord, how can a Christian, a big Christian, live on the street? And the Lord rebuked me. The Lord, the Lord showed me that was wrong. But it wasn't really until like a two weeks later, I come maybe a week later, two weeks later, I come back to this very same spot, a couple blocks away, and I start walking up the street. I'm headed towards Starbucks. And I come, I'm walking really fast, and I come up on Dennis, and he has his, and he's walking ahead of me, he has his little Gideon's Bible out, and he's witnessing to the guy next to him. And the Lord rebuked me. And the Lord said, you need to love this guy. He's my child. Amen. And so, hey, you oh, know, yeah. The Lord, He does what He wants with His people. And all we have to do is be in the place where He told us to go. You know, many years ago, the Lord did a work in my life. He called me to preach. And as I got involved in the church, I started looking at the pastor in the pulpit. And I go, Lord, I don't want to be like that. And the Lord, just like Jonah, the Lord said, I want you to go here. I go, I'm going over there. But the Lord, He was faithful and disciplined him, and He brought me back. And it's... And he says, hey, I want you to go here. I want you to do this. And I go, finally, you know, the Lord broke me. He humbled me. He disciplined me. Severely beat me, really. He took everything I had and had to humble me. 
Wow, that's incredible. And then he said, hey, I want you to do this. And I go, okay, Lord. And when I did it. that, and when I did that, it was like, and, and I know that most of you won't understand. You understand. We understand. Uh, but most of these people don't understand. You know, they sit around, they read the Bible, they, they go to church, they, they, they haven't experienced the Lord in a greater way because some of them haven't obeyed the Lord completely. Right. And so the Lord showed me in that day, in that time, when he said, go here and do this. And I said, Lord, it seems like foolish to me, but I'm going to do it. And when I did, it was as if the floodgates of the heavens opened up, you know, like the, the heaven opened up and the more light, more truth. I can't even describe to you. It's like the, it'd be like you're in a cloudy day and all of a sudden the, the, the clouds disappear and the, the sun shines on you. You go, wow. Yeah. And the oh, Lord no. did that to me. And so that's why I go out and preach. Hey, I want to be, I want to be obeying, obeying the God. The Lord, the Lord, you know, he told me to preach, so I want to preach. I want to obey him. <laughs> uh, Bill, let me ask you another question, because I know you do all these shirts. And then even off time, when you're not preaching, you're, you're, you know, making shirts. And you, you made the banner, you know, that's behind us. You're always, uh, you know, encouraging people to go do the work of the Lord and mm -hmm. equipping the saints and, and you know, just bringing glory to God through all these means by which you want you know the gospel to go forth. But do you think this is effective? Do you think walking around uh, with a message, Jesus died for your sins and arose from the dead? Yeah, I mean, you think this really works? Have you seen any fruit from wearing T-shirts or flying banners? I have, but you know, the one thing that when the Lord called me to preach because I was around a lot of people that would say, well, is there really any fruit in that? Are you going to see any fruit? And I said, Lord, I want to obey you even if I don't see fruit. And so I'm not looking for fruit. But I do have to say that when I'm discouraged and I get down and I think, oh, Lord, is this really, you know, and, I, and really you just believe the lies of the enemy when you do that. You're believing the devil. He's saying, oh, it's not doing any good. And the Lord... He causes people to come to me and to encourage me. And even that he would open up like uh, a time and he would, he would reveal things in the past and say, see what I was doing right here? See what I'm doing here? And so I see fruit. You know, I look at my wife as fruit of the ministry. I look at Dennis as fruit of the ministry. I look at Steve, who's holding the banner over there. Steve got saved. He was... I worked with, for him for about six years. I was an electrician apprentice, and uh, I was work, I worked still work. We still work for the same company, <clears throat> but uh, I worked for this company for about a year, and I was moving around all these different jobs. You know, keeping busy working, and I'm just going, Lord, I'm getting tired of moving around. I know that you called me to hear, but I said, Lord, can you bring somebody that would apprentice me, that teach me the trade, and and. And, you know, at that same moment when I was praying that, that was the desire of my heart to actually come out in prayer. I was at lunchtime, and I was on his job. Steve was running this job at this hospital, and I was praying. But I met Steve, and I didn't like Steve because Steve was a mean guy. He was just, like, hard, hard guy. And he, he was just he was just a bad guy. I can't even describe him. But I, I didn't like him, and I didn't think he liked me. But as I was praying that prayer, you know, and the Lord was showing me later, Oh, I answered your prayer at the moment that you spoke that you spoke it. He was answering my prayer. I just didn't see it. And Steve got saved years later. Not because of me, but because of the work that God was doing in my life, just being obedient. Yeah, I love that. I can't even say that I I can't even say that I did that. I looked to the Lord, I said, Lord, you did this work. It is your glory. You're the one who received glory. But I look back, you know, you know I like to talk about Hebrews chapter eleven, chapter faith. You know, where it says the, it says that it talks about all these people and it says their word still speaks today. So if I make a shirt, and you made more shirts than I have, I just happen to make shirts with vinyl and banner and stuff, but I think that that shirt still speaks. Even though it's just a shirt or this is the banner, people are going to remember this. Now, I preached in San Jose for a few years. God called me to go there and preach because. When I was younger, I used to go there, and it was like the Lord told me to go back there. That's where he started doing a work in me, told me to go back there. And I go back there, and the thing that the Lord does is he keeps showing me that even though 
I'll go there and I'll preach. There have been many times people come up to me and they're mad and they're angry and they go, I hear you every night. And, and a couple of times I go, you're a liar. But then the Lord, later the Lord showed me, no, they're hearing you every night. Because the Lord is replaying in their mind every night the words that you spoke to them. That word continues to speak to them. Oh, so yeah. I believe that banner, that shirt, that jacket, that sweatshirt, whatever it is, I mean, we've made banners to go all over the world. And, you know, it's not I'm looking for rewards for that, but I'm looking that Christ would receive a reward, that Christ Hallelujah. would be glorified. Hallelujah. And so he's going to make his word continue to speak. And I get Amen. to be a part of that. Amen. I get to be a part of that. One day when Jesus Christ will, he will, he will cause the books of our life to be opened up, just like in Hebrews, you know, I mean, I read about Elijah where God told Elijah to pray for three and a half years that it wouldn't rain. And then he said, pray, it would rain. And and then God speak of, spoke of him as if he prayed and he caused the rain to stop and the rain to come. And so I think in the same way, you know, God's going to say, look, you did this. You did that. I mean, we're going to go, oh, man, this is your crown. Oh, God, this is you. you yeah, we amen. didn't do this. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, man of God, I see the hand of the Lord upon you for good. I mean, I don't know anyone who gives like you get. But you I don't give enough, man. Okay. <laughs> you constantly give. You constantly lay down your life. And uh, yeah, I just see God's hand upon you. And it's, it's just such a blessing to have your life infused into mine as we stand along and go through all that we don't understand or know. Uh -huh. we're, we're growing moment by moment. We're being changed from glory to glory. And we go through the different battles and the different things that come in to try to divide and yep. destroy us. Yeah, try to divide us. us. Yeah. Try to oh, divide yeah. us. You know, and I, trying to divide us. Oh, yeah. But I praise <laughs> the Lord that uh, he has uh, he has done it for him for his Amen. own glory. Praise God. And uh, I really appreciate you sharing your life. And, and, uh, and I get I actually I get to be the part of it. I'm just bringing a little part to you. And uh, if you are a Christian. Uh, we want to encourage you to uh, to go do something for Jesus. Uh, the harvest is, is white. It's, it's ripe. It's ready to pick. And uh, we want you to go out. We want to encourage you. We want to supply you with the shirts. We want to supply you with the banners. We, we want to give you the tracks and the truth horn that you can yeah. proclaim. Anything that you need, uh, we want to be here. We want to pray for you and encourage you. And, and the questions that you have and where to stand and how to deal with the police. And, and just every aspect of, of uh, proclaiming the word of being a crier out on the street corner. We have actually have experienced, and many times we have confessed to one another even our sin or our bad attitude yeah. towards police or just just the different things that take place in the midst of the spiritual warfare. We're in a spiritual warfare. We're standing, right and all right kinds of people are walking by saying things, flipping us off. You don't see it. Just yeah. standing here, they know we're Christians just by saying, thank you, Jesus. You know, I, I love the shirts. They all know we're Christians. We're all, we're shining here and pushing back the gates of hell. And in this dark place in San Francisco, we, uh, we want to be light and salt. And we hope that's what you want to be. And if you're an unbeliever and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, <coughs> salvation is of the Lord. And, if he, and the Holy Spirit is convicting you of sin, troubling your conscience, bringing up to you the things that you have rebelled against God. Humble yourself. Get on your knees. Lay prostrate. That means you lay down flat on the ground, showing God you are dirt. Uh, and, and God sees that broken heart. He sees that contrite heart. And he rejoices in it. Many times me and him, oh, only when you see the video of our lives on that day, oh, yeah. when you know the times that we have laid out, you know, crying out and thanking God that his mercies are new this morning yeah. for us. Yeah. We experience the mercy of God every morning. Now you're experiencing the mercy of God because the Holy Spirit is convicting you of sin. That's true. This is the love of God. That's why we stand and we talk about sin because the Holy Spirit talks about sin. Yeah. And uh, we, we hope that you come to know him as your Lord and Savior. And, and join us, call us. And we'd love to pray with you and uh, disciple you. That's our, 
we, we love to impart our life to you. We love to be transparent. We love to tell you a lot more deeper things than this. Uh, Come out but, and hang out with us, you know. Now, but now we're going to go right into battle and we're going to preach the gospel. Amen. And I thank you, man of God, for uh, sharing your life. God bless you, bro. God bless you. We love, love you. you. We love you guys. We love you and your wife. And you love us. And it's amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I will see you next week. God bless. <laughs>